The Bible says God will put us to the test. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4, we read, But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel. Paul says that God trusted him and <clears throat> other apostles and other men and women with the, the message of the gospel, to take that gospel to uh, the very ends of the earth. And so he says that, that we were entrusted with this. And he says that, that this is something that he treated with great respect and great value to, to know that the precious message of the gospel. Now, what is the message of the gospel? Well, it's the, the good news of Jesus Christ, the fact that God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, that he was crucified according to the scriptures and that he was buried. And on the third day, he was raised again according to the scriptures. That's the, the good news of Jesus. And if you put your faith in him, God will save you. He will give you everlasting life and forgive you of your sins. And so Paul says, we were entrusted with this message. We are allowed of God to have this message. And so we, th this is what we speak. This is the message we take. At Corinth, Paul said, I determined to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And he says, we do this not as pleasing men, but God. He said, we're not preaching the gospel trying to please men. As a matter of fact, preaching the gospel got Paul in all kinds of trouble. And to this day, uh, gets lots and lots of people in trouble preaching the gospel. And depending on where you are, some places are more tolerant than others. There's some countries in the world that it, that you can get in all kinds of trouble for preaching the gospel. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the Israeli parliament uh, right now is considering a bill to make it against the law to proselytize in the name of Jesus, punishable by being put in prison. And so uh, men don't like the message of Jesus. Uh, Jesus told us, they hated me. This world hates me. It's going to hate you too. And so Paul says, what we do, our ministry is not about pleasing men. It's about pleasing God. And here's why Paul was interested in pleasing God, because he said, we're, we're, we, so we speak not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. God tries our hearts. God looks at our heart. Jeremiah tells us the heart is deceitful, desperately wicked. Who can know it? But God says, I try the heart, I test it. And I believe that Paul was probably thinking about Proverbs chapter 17 and verse three as he, as he wrote that, the finding pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord trieth the hearts. And so the Bible uses this metaphor of refining precious metals. And the way they do that is they put it into a finding pot or a crucible, they put it into a furnace, they melt it down, and then they can separate the, the, the bad stuff, the dross from the pure metal. And that's what God does with our hearts. God wants to, to, to have us to have a pure heart. That's why David prayed, create in me a, a, a clean heart, Lord. Uh, renew you a right spirit within me. God looks at the heart. He doesn't just look at the outward manifestation of our actions. He looks at the heart and the inward motivation. And that's why David prayed in Psalm 139, Verse 23, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Do you know that God tries your heart? God is interested in you having a heart that is, is focused on him and that is motivated by the love of Jesus Christ. And so he's going to, to put your heart to the test. God's going to look at the heart and he's going to, to weigh out our motives. And so it's, it's important for us that we consider what's going on in our heart, that we consider the word of God, that we submit to the word of God and that we come to God and we say to God, just like David did, search me, Lord, show, show me. If there's, if there's wickedness in me, show it to me because I need to repent of that. I need to confess that to you. And I need to receive your forgiveness from that. Get cleaned up and then get on about my life. I hope that, uh, that you will see the gospel message as precious as the Apostle Paul did. And let's take that message and, and let's live our lives in a way that we want to please God and let others know about the good news of Jesus. God bless you. Have a great day.